Hello, I'm Joel Haldifer, Collections Manager at the Mennonite Heritage Center in Harleysville. Today I'm sharing a selection of quilts and stories from our collection. We'll look at these mainly chronologically. These are simply selected quilts from the Heritage Center's collection. We have many more like than this, as well as many woven coverlets. The first one is our probably our oldest quilt in the collection. It's a Lone Star, a variation of the Lone Star pattern. Um, and we date this based on the fabric content, we date this to about 1850, 1850 to 60. So it is an early quilt, mid 19th century. It's actually um, um, the Lone Star with additional leaves, uh, leafy block pattern, surrounded by two sawtooth borders, an inner border and an outer border. While the maker and origin of this piece is not documented, the quilt was said to come from a Mennonite family or household in Souderton. It's large, it's 95 by 95 inches, and I think it's so large because the earlier beds, the four post canopy beds had a higher frame as well as the mattress sat higher. So you would need or want a larger quilt to hang down over the higher sides of the, uh, the mattress and the bed frame. Now, just a story um, or a lesson, a story about how we got this quilt. This was in the spring of 86, less than a year after I started working for the Heritage Center when we were located in Souderton. One day, a local antique dealer came in, walked in the door unannounced with this quilt and two other pieces. And he claimed, he claimed that he bought these three pieces, including this quilt, on a Mennonite auction in Souderton. After some discussion, we decided to buy the three pieces, including this quilt. We were essentially decided we would trust what he, the dealer, told us about it. There was no further evidence about what family. He had no, no information on what family or what auction it came from. We decided to buy it on his word, added it to the collection. Unfortunately, we have no further stories about it. Now, after a couple years of experience in working in, in the museum field, I learned, over the years I learned, I would never buy a quilt or any artifact, any other artifacts under those particular conditions. That is, without having more provenance or more proof of the family and community origin of the piece, I would not buy a piece like this again. So it's, it's an example of how an organization and how staff in an organization learn about um, best practices in, in uh, museum collecting work. This one um, is a sawtooth salt, star quilt. We're calling it that based on the, just the visual uh, description of the pattern, a sawtooth star. It's a dowry quilt in a sense that it was made by a young woman in anticipation of her marriage. It was made by Mary O. Lauchs in 1858, Mary Lauchs of Bedminster Township, Bucks County, a year before her marriage to Enos F. Huntsberger of Plumstead Township in 1859. They were members of the Deep Run East Mennonite congregation. The bottom right hand corner is signed and dated. You can't read it here, but it's, it's there in that block. But it's signed and dated there, Mary Lauchs, June something, illegible, June 1858. The quilt was passed down in the family to her grandson, Paul N. Hunsberger, and then to his son, the donor. It's also fairly large, 90, <clears throat> 94 by 88 inches. It was a gift of Ray Hunsberger in memory of his parents, Paul and Dorothy Hunsberger. Here we have a photo of the family and some friends or hired men of Enos and Mary Laux Hunsberger standing in front of their somewhat worn out looking farmhouse in, in Plumstead Township, Bucks County. This photo is about 1885, so it's fairly early for this kind of a photo. 
these people are not dressed up for a formal portrait. They're in their weekday working clothing. But here's Enos Huntsberger and his wife, Mary Lauks, the maker of the quilt. So we're seeing her here um, in small form about 25 years after, 26 years after their marriage and after she made the quilt. It turns out everyone in this photo, even though it's from the 1880s, everyone in this photo, fortunately, is identified on the back of the original photo. And even the name of the horse here, Kate, the yellow mare, even her name was documented by someone in the family. So we know the name of this dear horse 140 years later. This friendship quilt dates from right around 1863, was made for a young William G. Gross of Plumstead Township, Bucks County. It's probably made by his future wife, Anna Gutschalk, and her sister, Anna Gutschalk, and was given to William as a gift just before their marriage or possibly as a wedding gift, um, just at the time of his marriage to Anna Gutschalk in 1863. The center patch, I'll show it detail here, hard to read because it's, it's deteriorated, some, somewhat worn, but the center patch is inscribed, the property of William Gross presented by my friends. Two patches um, next to, to his, two patches next to his, above and below, have the names of Anna Gutschalk and Sarah Gutschalk in hearts. You can just see the hearts here. So their names are inscribed or uh, written in ink in those hearts. The other patches on the quilt have the names of friends and relatives in the Bedminster, Plumstead, and New Britain area of Bucks County. Two patches have names inscribed with, quote, Canada West. That would be today Southern Ontario. So there's two patches from relatives or friends in the Mennonite community of Southern Ontario, probably in the Vineland Jordan area on the Niagara Peninsula. This quilt survived a house fire in the, in the early to mid 20th century and some resulting water damage uh, after that, uh, as, a result, as a result of that fire. It measures 87 by 87 inches and it's on indefinite loan from a descendant with uh, intentions to eventually donate it. This beautiful piece from about 1880, we call, uh, the pattern is known as the Carolina Lily. Um, some people call it the triple tulip, but I've seen it referred to often as the Carolina Lily. Uh, this quilt's from the family of Noah and Maria Gaiman Ruth of the Line Lexington Mennonite Congregation and residents of New Britain Township, Bucks County. It was later owned by their daughter, Anna Mary Ruth, who married John Moyer, and then, uh, then their daughter, Mary Ann Moyer Althaus, who donated it to uh, us, the Heritage Center, in about 1977, shortly before she died. It measures 86 by 83. This churn dash, or some people call this the monkey wrench pattern, but I think usually it's the churn dash quilt, was made in about 1883 by Lizzie or Betsy, Wismer, born 1862, daughter of Samuel and Elizabeth Culp Wismer of Bedminster Township, and a member of the Deep Run East Mennonite Congregation. Family tradition states that Lizzie made this quilt in anticipation of her upcoming marriage, but her fiance died suddenly before they married and the quilt was put away. Lizzie never married, but later gave the quilt to her nephew, Harvey Wismer. It's 77 by 77 inches, and it was a gift of Jean Wismer Friesen. Here we see a detail um, of the larger photo, but showing, showing Lizzie here on the right and her sister, uh, single sister Mary. But both of these women never married, but then lived, continued to live on the old Wismer homestead in Bedminster Township um, as sisters, along with their adult brother, Eli Wismer. But here they are in the garden of the farm um, with the porch or the farmhouse in the background. But this, this photo is about 1890. So it's perhaps you know five to 10 years after she made 
the quilt uh, for her anticipated marriage that never happened. This is a, a nine patch block quilt um, in very good condition for its age. The colors are bright. The fabric is in good condition. According to family tradition, it was given, a, given as a wedding gift in 1885 to Henry M. and Lizzie Gutshaw Musselman of Franconia and Lower Salford Townships, Montgomery County. It includes a wide uh, chintz fabric border here. Oh, it's at least 12 inches wide, I think, around the whole border. Chintz is an older type of glazed, uh, printed cotton fabric, typically from the early to mid 19th century. So I believe this fabric, although it's in very good condition, is probably older than the quilt itself, than when the quilt was made. The maker is unknown, however. Um, it was later owned by their son, Raymond G. Musselman of Vernfield, and then by his daughter, the donor. It's a gift of Lucy Musselman de Perot. From the very same family and the same source is this, um, for lack of a better name, um, oak leaf and reel pattern quilt with, a, again, a floral print border, which could be a little older than when the quilt was actually made. Um, but again, it has the same story. According to the family, it was given as a wedding gift in 1885 to the same couple, Henry and Lizzie Gutshaw Musselman. But again, the maker is unknown, later owned by their son, Raymond Musselman. So it was also a gift of Lucy Musselman de Perot. This um, beautiful piece with an unusual pattern, or, not, not a common pattern that's seen around here, I was referred to by the family as the, quote, uh, Jerusalem tree quilt, or sometimes you see the pattern called the uh, tree of life quilt. It's also from around 1885, roughly. It was made by Annie Schatz Overdorf, wife of John Overdorf of Upper Salford Township, Montgomery County. Uh, made when she was perhaps around 50 years old. So as a middle-aged to older woman, making this quilt perhaps for a daughter. Um, the Overdorfs were members of the Salford Mennonite congregation. The quilt was later given to her granddaughter, Lizzie O. Moyer, a daughter of Jacob and Fanny Overdorf Moyer of Upper Salford, given to her in about 1900 when she married Abraham Abram Landis. It's 74 by 73 inches, and it was a gift of the late Edith M. Landis, who just died in the last month or so at the age of 104. Here's a photo um, of, on the left, Annie Schatz Overdorf, the quilt maker, with her daughter, Fanny Overdorf Moyer, in front of the Moyer farmhouse on Moyer Road in Upper Salford Township. This photo is about 1905, so it's perhaps 20, 25 years after the quilt was made. A friendship quilt uh, from about 1890 made for, um, excuse me, I jumped ahead too far. This is a, cr a crazy patch quilt um, from about 1890 made by Ella D. Landis of Bedminster Township, Bucks County just before her marriage to Christian M. Gross in 1891. As it turns out, he was abusive and an alcoholic. They separated after several years, um, and Gross died in 1895 with, before they, without them being divorced, and she later married J. Clarence Fretz of Bedminster Township. The quilt has an amazing collection of decorative embroidery. And this is just a detail of one of the many patches, all sorts of uh, needlework and embroidery represented on, on this quilt. It's 73 by 75 inches, and it was a gift of uh, Gladys Fretz Deal, a daughter of Ella Landis Fretz. Here's the friendship quilt, um, again, about 1890, made for and given by her students and parents to Annie C. Rowe, 
of Plumstead Township, Bucks County, a teacher at the Western Brick School on, on Stump Road in Plumstead Township. So again, a slightly unusual story of a group of young students, probably with their mothers or their parents, uh, making and giving this quilt to their, their beloved teacher. In 1895, Annie Rowe married Malin G. Gross of Plumstead Township, and she probably stopped teaching school soon after that. At the time of their marriage, they were members of the Doylestown Methodist Episcopal Church, but soon moved to Landisville, New Jersey. However, they later returned to Bucks County in about 1900 and joined the Doylestown Mennonite Church in about 1913 where they remained active members the rest of their lives. In fact, Malin was ordained a minister there at Doylestown Mennonite in 1920. Here's a photo of Annie Rowe as a, as a school teacher, roughly about age, uh, age 30, perhaps, age 20, 28 to 30. Another friendship quilt um, dated 1897 made or assembled by Mary G. Gaiman of Upper Hanover Township, uh, Montgomery County, a member of the ba uh, Bally Mennonite congregation. Mary had her female friends and relatives each make a block for her quilt. She received so many blocks that she had to make two quilts to use up all the blocks. Her cousin, Daniel G. Gaiman, a printer in Bally, printed the name of each friend on separate patches to place under each block. And here you see an example of that, just one of the blocks with the printed patch, token of respect from Sarah Gross for Mary. And then um, Daniel Gaiman printed his own name and date on a patch that was applied or stitched into the top of the quilt. So we know this quilt was made in 1897. So D.G. Gaiman was the printer who printed all these name patches, including his own, which got placed on the top of the quilt. Mary Gaiman later married John Creeble in 1914. The size here is 84 by 84, and the quilt was a gift of Lydia G. Creeble, their daughter back in the early years of our organization in probably 1975. The Star of Bethlehem quilt is, is dated 1901, made by Catherine or Katie Lew uh, Lewis Willauer, wife of Nathaniel Willauer of Franconia Township, Montgomery County, it was made as a Christmas present for her 14-year-old son, Aaron Willauer, in 1901. The inscription in the lower right, which, uh, which you can't read here, uh, reads Aaron Willauer, December 25th, 1901. So we know it was a Christmas gift. According to Aaron, um, Katie made a quilt for each of her five children. Turns out, we find from other sources, she made lots of other quilts that have been passed down in her family and some have made it out onto the, uh, to the market and are in various, in several different local museum collections. Nathaniel and Katie were members of the Salford Mennonite Church. This is a, a crib quilt. I actually don't, uh, yes, I do have the size. It's a 30 by 30 inch crib quilt in the basket pattern made in 1909 by Lydia Nice Detwaller, wife of Justice Detwaller of Doylestown Township, Bucks County, for her first and only child, Paul N. Detwaller, who was, was born in 1909. They were members of the Doylestown Mennonite congregation. This was a gift of Paul N. and Barbara Detwaller. So the, as, a, as an older man, he donated this quilt that had, had been made for him, made by his mother uh, when he was an infant. And we're fortunate here to have a fairly unusual photo of a mother and child in this period of time. So here's uh, Lydia Nice, Detwaller with her infant son, Paul N. Detwaller, about 1909 or early 1910. I think it's an unusual photograph for that, that time in this particular Mennonite community. Here's another Lone Star quilt 
made in 1927 by Priscilla Castle Stauffer, uh, wife of Levi Stauffer of Vernfield, Lower Stauffer Township, and it was given as a wedding gift to her granddaughter, Esther Stauffer of Vernfield, when she married Raymond G. Musselman in 1927. They were, they were all members of the Indian Creek Church of the Brethren. It was passed down in, uh, to their daughter, the donor. Uh, it's 76 by 74 inches, and it was given by uh, Lucy Musselman de Perot. And here's Raymond and Esther Stauffer Musselman at the time of their wedding in 1927. So here's, these are the people who the quilt was made for on the occasion of their wedding. This quilt has a really a pretty interesting story, and we, we know a lot about why and how it was made, thanks to the, the oral tradition of people who were associated with the cre creation of it. It's a, a missionary fundraising quilt, essentially, or actually a friendship quilt, dated September 1935, made by women of the East Swamp Mennonite Church, Quakertown, for the family of Peter J. and Jenny Gutschall Bear, who were about to return, 1935-36, about to return to China for their third term as missionaries under the General Conference Mennonite Church. They had been in China from 1915 to 1934 and were now home on thir uh, furlough, living with Jenny's parents, Pastor William S. and Nancy Gutschall of the East Swamp Church. The quilt was presented to the Bears at a farewell service of the Eastern District Conference Young People's Union held at East Swamp Church in September 1935. Uh, but before their scheduled return to China, Jenny was diagnosed with cancer. She died near Quaker Town in March 1936 and was buried in the Eden Mennonite Church Cemetery, Schwanksville. Neither the quilt nor the family ever returned to China. It was kept in the family for years and later given back, in a sense, to the East Swamp Mennonite Church. The quilt was embroidered with almost 1,200 names of members and friends, and that's what you're seeing here. These are all embroidered names of members and friends from most of the Eastern District Conference Mennonite congregations at that time. Each person, the story goes, gave 10 cents or more to the China mission work to get their name on the quilt. To create uniformity, Robert W. Gerhardt, a member of the East Swamp Church, was asked to pencil the lettering for the embroidery work. The congregations represented here include, I won't list them all, but include all the congregations at the time in the Eastern District Mennonite Conference, except strangely for two large congregations that are not represented on the quilt. So all the congregations of the Eastern District Conference are represented here in these, in these circles, except for the First Mennonite Church of Philadelphia and Zion Mennonite of Sounderton. For some reason, they are not represented on this quilt. Maybe there just simply wasn't room for the names of people from those congregations who may have given their, their dimes or quarters to the effort. Um, it also has names of members of the East Swamp Junior Christian Endeavor Society, as well as members of the Christian and Missionary Alliance, which had connections to the early General Conference Mennonite mission work in China. So this was this quilt, this incredible quilt, and here's a detail of the center patch, again, the very center patch. Here's a detail showing the names of the family who were and who in fact did receive it. Um, Peter J and Jenny Bear and all their family and relatives, including her siblings, her Gutschall siblings, and somewhere here, the names of her parents, W.S. and Nancy Gutschall. September 1935, Eastern District Mennonite Conference, they met, they met, and Jesus never fails. So that's the center patch. Here is the, the family of uh, Peter and Jenny Gutschall Bear, right about this very time in 1935. 
while they were home on furlough from China, their work in China. Here's Jenny, who then contracted cancer and died within a half a year of when the quilt was given. She died of cancer. Here's her husband, Peter Bear. Here are her parents, William S., longtime and beloved um, leader in the Eastern District Conference, and his wife, Nancy. And then these are all of the Bear children. Here we have the uh, quilt in the grandmother's flower garden pattern from about 1940, made by Lizzie Hagee Landis of Harleysville, Montgomery County, and a member of the Salford Mennonite congregation. The quilt was later given to her granddaughter, Mildred Alderford Weldy. The orange centers here are a stunning feature and a contrast to the pastels. Again, let's get the overall uh, impression of the, the quilt and here's a close-up of one of the one of the blocks. Um, the edge of the quilt is finished with a blanket stitch. It measures 80 by 84 inches and it was a gift of Earl L and Mary Ellen Alderfer. Here's a patchwork quilt from about 1935 to 1940. The design is a variable diagonal block pattern with both small and medium sized squares. According to the attached label, the quilt top, the quilt top was made, quote, in the 1930s by a very elderly but unidentified lady, end quote, and was quilted and finished at some point by Bertha Myers Chittick. Uh, Plumstead Township, Bucks County, and a member of the Doylestown Mennonite Congregation. Here is Bertha Myers Chittick with her husband Edward Chittick. Um, so I would, based on her birth year, 1883, she was perhaps uh, 50 years, 50 years old when she finished the quilt, and I would say that uh, in this photo she looks roughly to be about that age. So this photo is from about 1935 or so. The quilt was passed down to her grandson, J. Philip Moyer, the donor, just in the last year or two. And one more uh, striking quilt in the collection, um, which we know less about, but a tulip or lily quilt from the late 19th century comes from the family of the late Ellis C. Moyer of Franconia Square, or the village of Franconia in Franconia Township, Montgomery County. This pattern appears to represent a fully open tulip. It's 75 by 75 inches and was a gift of Hiram and Mary Jane Ledrock Hershey. So thanks for listening to um, this presentation about just some of, some of the uh, most uh, striking or beautiful quilts and those quilts with some unusual uh, anecdotes and stories associated with them. Thanks for listening.